Hello and welcome to episode three of Gapy's Grow Room Updates. It's been about six weeks now since we started our first seeds of the season. Those were the onions and are right back there under the LEDs. I'll be showing you how those are doing here in a couple minutes. But our grow room is almost completely full right now. There's not much room left for more stuff. So I'll be taking out some of the cooler weather crops like the arugula, spinach, kale, some lettuce. Those are all going to go outside here in the next week or so to make room for more stuff because I've got more seeds to start this month and I'll show you what I'll be starting in the next week or two as well. So let's take a look and see how everything is doing. Let's start with our fig bin. We've only got four fig cuttings left in our fig bin and you could see some new things over here. Those are not figs. These are actually kiwi vines. So these kiwi vines I got from a local plant swap. So I'm going to try rooting those. I've got three cuttings in each cup. They don't have any roots yet. They were just started a couple weeks ago. And then we've got our four fig cuttings here. All four of these do have roots, but I haven't moved those under the lights yet because they don't have quite enough green growth. This one here is got a little leaf poking out there, so I will move this one under the lights here in the next day or so. And then these other three, this one doesn't really have much going on. These last two have a little bit of green growth, but the leaves haven't opened up yet. So we'll probably wait another week or so. We'll have to see how long it takes those buds to open up. Now our LED shelf here is getting pretty full. We've got two LED panels on them from two different brands. This is the Spider Farmer SF1000 that I just got a couple months ago. And then this one here is the Mars Hydro TS1000. So they're very similar, but they also have a few differences. And I'm still planning on doing a comparison of these two lights. So there's some things I like about one that I don't like about the other. And I'll go over all of those things in that video. But this one here is the Spider Farmer and that one is set to about 70% strength right now. And this is where all of the figs are at. So you notice that the figs are all kind of different heights, especially these three here. These are in tree pots. So they're a lot taller than these ones that are in cups. And then these two here, you can see I've got these on some wood blocks just to raise them up a little bit. So the panels here, both of the panels really, um, the light isn't the same strength all the way across. So as you go more towards the outside of the light, the strength does get dimmer. So I've got a, a light meter that I use to determine how high I need to raise these plants in order to get kind of an even light. So everything in here is at about between 300 to 350 par. And that is about where you want it. But that has really helped me a lot to determine where to place these fig cuttings so they get the proper amount of light because you can't keep them all the same height because that really doesn't give them an even light. Now over on this side I've got my onions. So these onions were started the end of January or maybe it was the beginning of February. At least most of them, these four on the outside here. And they are doing really good. I've trimmed them about probably five or six times now. And it looks like they're getting pretty close to needing another trim, but we've got our blush and Rosa de Milano on this side. These are the ones that were that had older seeds, so the germination wasn't quite as good. And then these ones over here, the red carpet and Sedona, those were brand new seeds this year and the germination was just great. And then these middle ones are ones I started later. This is the Rosa Lunga Tropia. And then those are some American flag leeks and could see how much thinner these are. And these were only started probably three weeks after these other ones, but the, the difference is pretty amazing. They're also in smaller containers, which probably also affects the growth. Uh, and then over here, I've moved my cup and saucer flowers over under this light, because as you can see, they are getting quite tall. And this one, these are vines. So this one is, looks like it's growing some 
little tendrils, so I might need to find something for it to climb on because it looks like it does want to climb something. But we've got two of those. This one's also got a little tendril coming out. But I moved these under here because they are just getting way too tall for the fluorescent lights I have over there. So this is where they're at, and I've got them on a box to get them a little bit closer to the light because they are kind of off to the side of the light here. And these are here in the middle, and that is why I place these two shorter containers in the middle because the middle is where the light is most intense on these lights. So that's why I put those in the middle. And then the last thing I've got over here is some blue velvet honeyberry cuttings. So these I think are kind of challenging to propagate. I got these from the same plant swap that I got the kiwi from, but I'm not sure how well these will do. It does look like this one here in the back is getting some new growth on the top, so that's a really good sign. There hasn't been really anything happening on these other two. They had some kind of green growth when I got them, but they haven't grown any more since I put them in this container here, and I do not see any roots on these yet either. Now right underneath the LED shelf, I've got my seed germination tray. So I don't have too much stuff in here right now. I just took the peppers I started out of there yesterday, but all that we have left here is this Biden's Aristosa. So this is, I believe, a perennial flower, but that was started about 10 days ago. I'm not sure if these take a long time to germinate, but nothing has come up yet. And I did cold stratify those for a couple months in the fridge before planting. And then we've got some China asters, and those were just started, I believe, five days ago, and nothing is up on those yet. And then this white seeded Samara lettuce was just started a couple days ago. So we should see those start popping up here in the next couple days. Now these grow shelves are almost completely full. We've got stuff on all three shelves. The bottom shelf still has room for two more trays, so I will be filling those up here before too long. So let's go ahead and start on the bottom row. This is where all of the peppers are, and let me raise the light. I've got these pulleys here that makes raising the lights really easy. As you can see, that is now raised. Let's take a look and raise this other side. All right, now we could see our plants a lot easier. So these are the hot peppers that I started. We've got the tangerine tigers. These two here from Matsutake are growing the fastest, followed by the Batman tangerine tiger, and then these ones are Rhiannons. And then we've got our Beth Boyd orange scotch bonnet and bikinos. Those are still a little bit smaller. These are Chinense varieties, while this tangerine tiger is a Bacatum. Bacatum peppers normally grow a little faster, so that's why these are a lot bigger. And then we've got our later started seven pot mustards here. These are the super hot green peppers. So I just, just took these out of the paper towels a couple days ago, so they haven't come up out of the potting soil yet, so hopefully those will come up in the next day or so. Unfortunately, my mustard ghost did not germinate, so I'm just going to have hopefully these ones for my green hot sauce this year. And then these are all of 24 varieties of annuum peppers that I started and showed in my previous video. If you missed that, you can see all the different varieties that I'm growing this year. But I'm not going to go over every single one of these. I've had nine of them germinate so far, and those that haven't germinated, I've put these little kind of jello shot cups that I got on Amazon over them, and that acts as a little humidity dome so that the soil doesn't really dry out and they can germinate a lot easier. And I really do not expect all 24 of these varieties to germinate. I suspect some of these are pretty old seeds and might not come up at all. But so far the ones that have come up I'll show you are the Guajillo, Aconcagua, Farmer's Market Jalapeno, Zapotec Jalapeno, Matapeno, Tam Jalapeno, the Guillopo Gochu, the Padrone, and Gabby Hot Wax. I almost forgot to show you this little guy that's hiding out with the peppers. This is another one of those cup and saucer vine flowers. If you recall in my last update video, I had one of these seedlings that had a seed stuck to the top of the seedling. 
Well, I did surgery to remove the seed and it didn't really go very well. And I wasn't sure if the seedling was gonna make it, but it's still alive and it does look like it's trying to push out some leaves. So I just have it here with the peppers in hopes that it will survive. And I do have both of the pepper trays on heat mats. They're the only trays I've got on heat right now. And it's set to about 80 degrees. This shelf has a lot of our cool weather crops that are gonna be going outside here in the next week or so to make room for other stuff. Let's take a look at this first tray. This is our pink celery and our tango celery. So I still have these in the these single containers. So I'll be separating these out into individual cells probably in the next week or so. And then this one here is the Komatsuna, which is an Asian green. You could see these did get a little bit leggy. I missed checking my seed starting tray for a day and didn't get these under the lights as soon as I would have liked. So these got a little bit leggy, but I think they'll still be okay. Those are gonna go outside and get separated into individual cells here pretty soon as well. And then we've got all of our lettuces and endive. So these green ones here are the Benefine endive. And then these dark purple ones are the ox heart strawberry lettuces. And then we've got all of our parsley. So I just repotted the parsley into individual cells. Um, I believe it was last week I just did that. And then here we've got some purple Beni Hushi Mizuna. So these got a little bit leggy as well. So I'll be separating those into individual cells here pretty soon as well. So you can see how fast these shelves fill up with starts when you start separating out these seedlings from individual cells to their own cells. And then this last tray is the Swiss chard and that just started germinating in the last few days. Uh, we've got three different varieties, canary, pepper, mint, and then the last one is neon. So this is a neon mix. And unfortunately there's only one seedling that has come up in that tray. So pretty poor germination. I did use the rest of my seeds of that. So that's good. And then back here in the very back, I'm going to pull out that tray so that we can get a closer look. All right. So here's the trays that were in the back. We've got our arugula here, and I don't think I showed these trays in a, my previous video, but these are trays from Never Sink Farm, and I got those online. You can see the roots coming out the bottom there. So these trays are similar to soil blocking, and they've got some slits down the side to keep them from getting root bound. So I really like these trays for that reason, but I just wish they had some larger cell trays because the, the cells are a little bit small. And then we've got our Morton's Secret Mix of Lettuce. And I really like the variety of lettuces that came in this mix. A um, large portion of them have variegated leaves, which is really pretty cool. Um, and then we've got a few that are just kind of a dark purple. And then this one is all green, but these are getting pretty big and probably need to be moved into bigger containers. So I've got them in these six cell trays right now. And then back here, we've got our Lavua spinach. And these are also in the Never Sink farm trays. You can see the roots down there starting to come out the bottom. And these are probably ready to go outside. So I'll be doing that here in the next week or so. And then this last tray is all kales. So I've got a few different varieties of kales. Let me turn this one around. So we've got Dazzling Blue and this is a Willems Blue. So these are in four cell trays, but we've also got some in these Never Sink farm trays as well. But I've also got the Dazzling Base Note and Dazzling Texture. So Dazzling Texture and Dazzling Base Note are kind of cousins of the more common Dazzling Blue. And I think you can only get those from Experimental Farm Network, which is where I got those. So I'm really excited to see how those do. But you can see the leaf pattern is different than the Dazzling Blue. This one is a little bit more frilly. And the, the Dazzling Blue is more kind of a lacinato shape. And then I'm a little disappointed with the, the sea kale here. So this is the tray of sea kale. Only one of our 
seedlings is looking really pretty awesome. There was really poor germination, which was to be expected, um, but we've only got one, two, looks like maybe four seedlings out of, I think we started, what, 5, 10, 15, I think we started 20 seeds. So four out of 20 isn't so great, but um, I'm going to be splitting those up into individual cells here um, shortly. Now this top shelf is pretty much all flowers and they're a little bit hard to get to because they're so high. I moved the front row of trays down here so we could get a closer look. So here we've got two different varieties of pin cushions. We've got the Black Knight and Summer Fruits. The Black Knight is taking a little bit longer to germinate. That one is just starting to come up. We've only got two sprouted so far and we've got several more of the other one up. And then the Portulaca, this, it was really bad germination on this one. We've only got a handful, maybe seven or eight seedlings there. And then we've got our Calendula. So we've got um, a variety that I got from my friend Alicia. We have Solar Flashback and Bronze Beauty. We've got three different varieties there. And then the Rudbeckia was another one that had really poor germination. Only one came up and I started it in a tray like this with a bunch of seeds, but I just transferred it to its own cell. And then we got our true potato seed. So I've got two different varieties here. This front cell and last cell are both the same. This is a Koofy mix. And then I got this one from Nathan. They are both members of the Kenosha Potato Group on Facebook. And the Nathan's mix is germinating really pretty well. I've got tons of them coming up but nothing has come up yet on the Koofy seeds. And then we've got the Clarkia. So this is a tower coral variety and we've just started getting some germination on those. And then the last tray over here is all snapdragons. So we've got two different, actually three different varieties of snapdragons. We've got Madame Butterfly Dark Red, Madame Butterfly Bronze, and then this last one is a Cherbert Chantilly mix. So these are all Fairly tall varieties. They, there's also some shorter snapdragons, but these three varieties get fairly tall. All right, here's the last two trays on the top shelf. Here we've got pink dandelions and white dandelions. The pink ones germinated earlier, but the white ones are starting to catch up. We've got a alyssums. So this is the second year I've grown alyssums, alyssums from seed. Last year they did really well and thought I would grow those again even though I've probably got a bunch that are going to self-seed. We'll have to wait and see. And then we've got chrysanthemums. This is a fancy pants mix. We just transferred these into individual cells not too long ago. And then we've got carnations. This is the Chabald La France variety. First time I've grown those. And then our last tray is not flowers. This is all of our basils. We've got three different varieties of basils. We've got the sweet Genovese basil, we've got the purple opal basil, and then we have our Thai basil. So here's the temperature and humidity sensor that I've got in my grow room. It's showing 67 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% humidity. Now the humidity in here was a lot higher the other day. It was up to almost 65% and I decided that was a little too high. I decided to get out the 22 pint frigid air dehumidifier that I got a couple of years ago. I currently have it set to 55% humidity, so it does a pretty good job of keeping the humidity down to between 50 and 55% in the grow room. And I haven't had to change the water out yet, but it will probably get full in the next couple days. Lastly, let's take a look at our potting bench and see what seeds we're going to start in the next week or so. We've got our eggplants. I've got a Hansel variety, which is kind of an Asian type. It's a long, skinny, purple one. And this is a hybrid that I've grown and seems to do the best out of all the eggplants I've tried. But I'm also trying this Mestiza Talong. It's another, I think, Korean eggplant. And this came from second generation seeds. And then we've got some more lettuce. I'm going to start another round of lettuce. So this is the outrageous romaine. These are seeds that I saved, I think, last year. And then I'm going to grow some more of that Morton's Secret Mix. And then we're going to start our larger sized tomatoes. We'll go over what varieties I'm going to be starting. 
got the Orange Crush, Thunder Mountain, Pink Fang, Black Icicle, Bulgarian Triumph, Captain Lucky, Vilms, Fortunia, De Amico, and Blue Beach Paste. So as you can see, every single one of these came from seed swaps that I've done over the years. So none of these were actually from stores. And then we've got some more flowers that we're going to be starting. We've got Coral Fountain Amaranth, California Poppy. This is a Thai Silk Pink Champagne Poppy. So normally poppies are best grown direct seeded, but I think I've heard this particular variety does better if you start it inside. Cracker Jack Marigolds, Copper Red Straw Flower, Apricot Mixed Straw Flower, Dragonfire Straw Flower. And we've got some Nasturtiums, Kaleidoscope Mix, Orchid Flame, Orchid Cream. We've got our Zinnias, Oklahoma Ivory, Aztec Sunset, Berneri's Giant Coral, and my favorite, Queen Lime Blush. And as you can see, all these flowers came from actual seed stores. And then lastly, we've got our peppers in a can. So these are the two cans that I decided to go with this year. This one's got a nice flower pattern, almost looks like wallpaper. Um, this one came from Hook's Stash. But these are both local breweries. We're going to try Sedona Sun and Midwest Midnight. Oh, we've got our Rio Grande tomatillos that we're going to start as well. I hope you enjoyed this grow room update. Let me know what's growing in your grow room. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.